So this is part one of the video series for the pre-oxygenation procedure on uh, the COVID-19 patients and respiratory failure. Um, we're putting together these packs to facilitate the proper pre-oxygenation uh, of these patients so that uh, we do not contaminate with uh, aerosolized particles. So let's first look at what is in the pack. So we're gonna, these are the packs that were put together by one of our nurses. Okay, so in the pack we have checklist here for what's supposed to be in the pack. And then it gives you kind of an overview on how we're doing this, okay? And then it gives you an intubation checklist and that's gonna be part two of our video series for this, okay? So, in the pack you have tube holder, you have a non-rebreather, we have BVM with adult mask, we have N95, we have viral filter, we have a bougie, and tidal CO2, and there's a couple of versions of these. They're for the tube only. Don't put the nasal cannula ones in. It's just the tube only, and there's a couple different versions. One that uh, hooks up to our monitor system, and then the other one for our standalone system right here, okay? And then just a regular nasal cannula, just a, you know, your typical nasal cannula, peep valve, and then making sure that you have the two oxygen trees because you have to run two separate oxygen um, flow meters, okay? Okay, so we're gonna go over the, an overview of the procedure very, very quickly. We are going to make sure that we have our equipment that's in the room already with the patient that's suspected of having this, okay? We're gonna have the equipment that we have immediately outside the room that will be brought in by the three personnel that are gonna be the team managing this patient's airway. Okay, so number one, uh, you have to make sure that inside the room you have a crash cart, you have end tidal CO2 capability, we have two oxygen trees on our flow meters, okay? And uh, I think that is about it as far as what has to already be in the room. Now, outside the room, you have to have your personal protective equipment, okay? That is going to be a fluid proof gown, uh, double gloves. We are going to have N95 mask if you do not have facial hair. If you have facial hair, then you're gonna have to gear up with a papper, okay? And then, of course, we're going to have our face shields as well. And if you don't have a papper, you also have to have goggles that kind of cover the eyes completely. Those things are going to be immediately available outside of the negative pressure room that the patient is in, okay? And then we are going to talk about what we have to bring into the room, which is we have to bring in our glide scope. And on the glide scope, you should have your glide scope stylets. You should have an assortment of tubes. You should have an assortment of hyperangulated blades. And you should have other things that would that you would normally use for intubation, like um, regular stylets and 10 cc syringes. Okay. I'm not going to recommend, nor have I heard the recommendation of using colometric change devices for intubation because it's we are actually going to be using waveform capnography. And I want to add from the last segment is that the nurse will bring in your RSI kit. I think it's important to know that you have to bring in the appropriate drugs for the procedure um, as well. So that's another thing that you'll have to bring in from outside the room. Now we have our patient here. She's suspected of having COVID-19 infection. She is desaturating on nasal cannula oxygen or, or non-rebreathing oxygen. So she needs intubation. because so we're not gonna use BiPAP, we're not gonna use CPAP. Uh, that's the only option left, she needs to be intubated. So we are going to pre-oxygenate her. We are going to say that the this, what you see here, is our full PPE. We are gonna do this in a team of three, one nurse, 
one registered respiratory therapist and one provider and we are going to come in and we are going to have a plan to intubate the patient but before we do that we want to achieve the highest oxygen saturations we possibly can. So we're going to grab our pre-ox pack that will be available in our clean utility room. All right. So the first, there's two, there's two different types of uh, ways you can do this. There are two different modalities that you can go with for this. Okay, we have the nasal cannula with a non-rebreather over it, with an N95 over it, or you have the BVM approach, which is the one we're going to show you now. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you come into the room is you want to have your nasal cannula ready and I will hand the nasal cannula over to the nurse and she's going to open that, hook it up to the oxygen tree and put it on the patient without turning on the oxygen yet, okay? All right. All right, so the next thing is you get your BVM out, you have your peep valve on, okay? And the peep valves, to turn the, you know, to put the peep valve on the BVM is, is pretty self-explanatory, but it goes on the exhalation port of every standard BVM, okay? You wanna dial that peep to zero to start. Dial the peep to zero. You wanna make sure that you have, hold this, we'll put your end tidal CO2 there first because the filter should be closest to where the patient is. So anything that goes into the filter, directly from the patient goes directly into the filter, okay? So now what we have is our BVM, peep valve, end tidal CO2 detector, waveform capnography, I should say, and then we have our viral filter, okay? Just hold on to that. And then inside here, we have a standard adult mask, okay? So we hook that up, make sure these connections are nice and tight, hook that up to the end tidal CO2. That's the um, portable one. So we have that on the flush rate oxygen at 25 liters a minute. Yes. Let's turn it up. There we go. Good. Okay, so now what we need to do now, you have to understand that the oxygen in this reservoir has nothing to do with this mask until the patient takes a breath. The patient's spontaneously breathing, so it's important not to squeeze the bag. The patient will pull the oxygen from this reservoir into his or her lungs without squeezing the bag. So do not squeeze the bag, okay? And the purpose of this whole device is to, is to provide CPAP without the risk of aerosolized particles, okay? So the next thing that we're gonna do, we have everything hooked up, we have, I don't think that we're missing anything. Can you guys think of anything? We have to double check mm, ourselves? No, I think we're good. We'll just have to turn up for nasal cannula the four to six liters per piece. Right, so now we're gonna go ahead, and this is the, tr this is the critical part now. I'm going to have my Ideally, my respiratory therapist coming around here and holding the bag so that my nurse can be available for the, you know, drawing up the medications for RSI. How are you breathing with this? Can you breathe okay? Don't bag. Okay, so breathe in and out for me. Okay, now, holding a nice seal, as you can see, anything that she exhales is going to go through the viral filter into the system and out the exhalation port here, which is a which is a peak valve. So if you need more oxygenation, if the saturations are 89% with this unit, you can dial up your peak a little higher to 10. And obviously, our nasal cannula oxygen should be on four to six liters per minute, as we said before, because that's what's really going to activate your peak valve and continue to look at your patient, look at the numbers. Jordan, how do you feel? Can you breathe okay through that? Do you feel like you're getting good enough breaths? 
as you breathe in and out. Okay. So there's no need to squeeze this bag. The only thing you're going to do is insufflate the stomach. Don't squeeze. This whole unit here is an antiviral filtered, high powered CPAP unit that does not cause any environmental exposure except for what will leak out of the side of the, uh, the mask. So the seal, two-handed, good two-handed seal, keeping the airway open, however you need to do it, depending on the patient's body habitus, and the respiratory therapist can kind of hold this unit like this until we go into the second step of the procedure, and that is to paralyze or to sedate, paralyze the patient, discontinue this, and that will be in our second video. Is there anything you want to add from a nursing standpoint? No. Okay. Is there anything you want to add from a respiratory therapist standpoint? Are you still breathing okay with that, Jordan? Okay. Breathe in and out real good to see if we have any leaks around this. Okay. Now I'm, I'm feeling all of her exhalation come out of that port right there where the peak valve is. And that's a good sign because all of that is filtered gas, okay? If I'm feeling anything coming out of the mask, then that's contaminated gas. And that's what we want to avoid. So it's really about putting the mask on with a good seal, okay? We'll see you for the second video uh, on the intubation procedure.